Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 25th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I summarized yesterday's Apple patches, so if you're interested in how much overlap there is between uh, different Apple operating systems, you may find this helpful. As usual, there's quite a bit of overlap here uh, because these operating systems between iPadOS, iOS, macOS, and so on are sharing quite a bit of code. Also, somewhat noteworthy that tvOS did not get an update. I suspect this will come later this week. Well, uh, maybe next week. Again, there should be quite a bit of overlap here in particular when it comes to things like WebKit or some of the kernel issues. And we got a couple products here where it uh, starts to get difficult to figure out if a vulnerability is actually new or uh, if it's just sort of uh, something new about an existing vulnerability. First product here is Manage Engine, in particular CVE 2022-47966. This is actually a vulnerability in the Apache Sun to Aurora product or Sun to our Rio product. That a product is used to implement the SAML single sign-on in Manage Engine. It fixed a vulnerability in October. However, it took a while for Manage Engine actually uh, to patch its product and sort of one of those typical dependency supply chain issues where there was a delay. This vulnerability was patched in Manage Engine on January 10th. On January 8th, 18th, which was uh, late last week, and I think I covered this, Horizon 3 AI did then uh, come out with a proof of concept. This uh, vulnerability is now officially considered uh, exploited in the wild, and I'll link uh, to a GitHub repository that implements a scanner for this vulnerability. The second product is KSMBD. Uh, that's uh, the uh, kernel module for the Linux kernel that implements the SMB protocol. Well, uh, we had the famous vulnerability CVE 2022-47939 just before the holidays and then the one after the holidays, and that's a CVE 2023-0210. And for this vulnerability, which was first disclosed, I believe also January 10th, we now have additional details from Sysdic with sort of a proof of concept type uh, exploitation uh, code. So uh, definitely something that you should pay attention to. The mitigating factor here is that it's not enabled uh, by default. And of course, SMB should not really be exposed across any kind of perimeter. Most likely spot where you find this enabled is any sort of disk-based network storage devices that you purchased last year or where you sort of did a major operating system update last year. But uh, other than that, it's one of those things you really need to keep an eye on and try to figure out if any of the systems that you have are running this because there's a lot of attention also currently focusing on this uh, kernel module. So expect uh, more to come. And if anybody here is... Uh, publishing about vulnerabilities or is responsible for their particular product's vulnerability listing and sort of security advisory page, please, please add dates when it was first published and maybe sort of a little bit change history to those documents. Makes my life a lot easier. And when it comes to encryption, well, it's not like a good wine. It doesn't get better with H and you always have to be ready to upgrade whatever you are doing uh, with encryption as the attacker is gaining more CPU power or as weaknesses in algorithms are being discovered. And one place where this is sort of uh, very obvious recently is password managers. We of course had the big last pass problem where uh, Secrets were leaked that were hashed, but maybe not sufficiently hashed. 
Bitwarden has often been sort of offered as an alternative uh, to LastPass. What I like about Bitwarden is that it actually allows you to keep your own local repository. So you're not relying on a third party to keeping it secure, but you of course still want your secrets uh, to be protected and hashing is the way to go here. The big problem with Bitwarden was how many iterations of the password-based key derivation function tool or PBKDF uh, to uh, hash are being used. They often have claimed uh, 200,001 iteration, which isn't bad, but apparently one problem with Bitwarden is that they didn't sort of include a good way to upgrade the hashing being done once the account has been established. So over time, as they should, they increase the number of iterations. If you have an older account, you may be stuck with a number of iterations that may no longer really be considered sufficient. And uh, as the blog post that I'm linking to here points out that that just uh, OWASP again uh, did increase uh, the recommendation to 600,000 iterations. The number of iterations isn't really all that uh, critical here. Uh, how many iterations you exactly have, it just slows down the attacker, but the ability to upgrade uh, the iteration and even upgrade the hashing algorithm is something that sort of needs to be designed into these products as uh, they, like I said, don't get better with age and have to be at least uh, annually every other year or so to be upgraded to stay ahead of the attacker's capabilities. And just quickly, Sans also today made one of my Packet Tuesday recordings live, sticking with IPv6 for this episode. This time it's Neighbor Discovery, which goes well with last week's topic, Router Advertisement. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.